Hi, my name is Quentin Moore, and I'm going to discuss enhancing patient education to improve satisfaction levels in radiation therapy departments. Patients with cancer have repeatedly described the importance of information, communication, and support to effectively navigate through their course of treatment. These focal areas are key elements to assure in radiation therapy departments as approximately 50% of patients with cancer are recommended to undergo some form of radiation therapy treatment. Therefore, the purpose of investigating this particular topic is to determine information and communication modifications that can be incorporated to enhance patient satisfaction. This is important when you consider the individual humanistic level as well as the departmental effectiveness. Satisfaction with the patient experience has become an increasingly important outcome metric since the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS, adjusted its re reimbursement model in October of 2006. So really the goal of investigating the literature is to determine adjustments that can be made to facilitate improvements in the patient experience for those being treated in radiation therapy departments, with emphasis being placed on information and communication delivery approaches that can be incorporated throughout the patient's course of treatment, and this includes from the points of consultation, throughout treatment delivery, and into post-treatment phases. The literature that was reviewed was acquired through investigations in two databases, that being PubMed and Google Scholar, and a total of 18 resources were selected. Collectively, the results revealed that a patient-centered approach to care is particularly well suited for cancer care as it's intended to focus on the whole person while considering the patient's physical, social, and emotional preferences and needs. Patients with cancer, they want reliable and honest disclosure of information to facilitate an individualized shared decision-making approach. Evidence reflects that this particular type of approach can enhance the overall experience for the patient and lead to better adherence throughout the course of the treatment. When you look at collectively at the results though, they did pinpoint three specific areas of focus. Those being information delivery, patient specific considerations, and unmet patient needs. A large percentage of information related to diagnosis, radiation therapy treatment approach, and side effects that are associated with that approach are discussed with patients through an informed consent process during the initial treatment consultation. This initial experience can be an overwhelming time period, which can lead to high distress and potentially cause misinterpretation or inhibition of information processing. Low levels of information recall, though, are associated with low levels of patient satisfaction, which reflects that carefully crafted approaches should be utilized to assist with delivery of information. Yet, at times, physician philosophy regarding patient-centered approaches can vastly differ, creating challenges that negatively impact the perception of a patient's treatment experience. Given that a patient-provider relationship ranks as a top priority for patients, a variety of factors should be considered when delivering information, whether that be verbally or through the use of educational resources. As information is being delivered to patients with cancer, the majority prefer their providers to be empathetic and supportive while providing personalization and informal approaches to their delivery. This will improve satisfaction, but there have been reports that provider sensitivity, supportive communication, and a lack of tailored and personalized approaches are being delivered. Confounding the situation additionally is that Patients with cancer do see a vast number of providers, and the more providers that a patient sees, the more opinions, perspectives, details, and information that they're given, all of which can negatively impact the collective patient experience. Further, the need for individualized, patient-focused information is an important consideration as the format, delivery approach, and the amount of information needed will dramatically differ from person to person. Preferences are not only going to differ between persons, they're known to change at the individual level over time, sometimes randomly, which requires providers to have stop points to consistently monitor patient needs and information comprehension. A baseline evaluation of a variety of individualized factors 
perhaps is best evaluated in the form of a pre-treatment assessment to determine the appropriateness of information, desired amount of education, and the most effective delivery methods for that individual patient. Regardless of patient preferences, patients have consistently expressed a desire for more information, but in terms of demographics, differences in age, gender, and marital status have demonstrated statistically significant differences. Older age is associated with lower levels of information recall, but overall, individuals that are older tend to have higher levels of satisfaction in lower information needs than younger counterparts. Females were more dissatisfied with their care than males, and women with children less than 20 were the least satisfied um, with information received overall. Patients that were divorced or widowed were also less satisfied than individuals that were married. And additionally, personality type and coping skills also impact satisfaction with those that tend to experience more negative emotions and more social withdrawal experiencing lower levels of satisfaction, thus revealing that emotional factors and support systems likely influence satisfaction perhaps even more than the care that's delivered itself. Additionally, patients experiencing depression required more information, communication, and emotional support than individuals with better mental health status. Health literacy was also a factor, with individuals with higher health literacy tending to be more satisfied than individuals with lower health literacy as misinterpretation can occur with communication and information assimilation. Other factors to consider included stage of cancer and treatment approach, as patients with higher stages of diagnosis, so stages two through four, tended to be less satisfied with the information that they received than stage one cancers, and also patients that underwent chemotherapy prior to radiation therapy report lower levels of information received than those that did not go undergo chemotherapy. So you can see that there are a variety of factors, wide range of factors to consider. And one of the perhaps the most effective mechanisms to verify whether a patient is understanding the information um, that they've received is to utilize a teach back method. This type of approach can help to reduce the number of unmet patient needs. Providing patients with adequate individualized information remains a challenge as 35% of patients found that their overall level of information that they were provided with was inadequate. So patients, they must have access to information. Um, side effects remain a particular concern, but there are other reported deficiencies those being expected results of the treatment, um, about the treatment itself, and the amount of psychological support-based information was very, very minimal at 8 to 18 percent. Other researchers have noted additional information concerns, including the risk involved with the treatment itself, long-term side effects, cause of the disease, chance of cure, signs of recurrence, life expectancy, home care, and coping strategies. All factors need to be comprehensively considered as there is a known direct correlation between the importance of the information that's being delivered and patient satisfaction. Facilities can begin to ready themselves by providing updated sources of information to patients in a variety of formats on a routine and continuous basis throughout the patient's treatment experience. By providing adequate information, it's known to improve the patient's quality of life. It's essential really to note that the education process not only should go on in the consultation phase, so before treatment begins, during the treatment phase, but also after the patient's treatments do end. Withdrawal of support in an abrupt fashion has revealed itself as a problem, which makes providing information during follow-up even years after an essential element to improving the patient experience in radiation therapy.
Collectively, once the three primary subgroups, those being information delivery, patient-specific considerations, and unmet patient needs were considered, the literature revealed that individualized educational approaches can result in more effective informed decision-making, better treatment adherence, improved health-related quality of life, and enhanced satisfaction with received care. Therefore, demonstrating that a prescribed focus on patient-centered approaches leading to shared decision-making during consultation through some form of pre-treatment evaluation to establish that baseline needs assessment, along with multiple non-scripted check-in points throughout the treatment experience and the availability of formal education supports, can enhance patient education, support, and subsequently patient satisfaction in radiation therapy departments. The following resources were used to support the information in this presentation. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and thank you for your time.